World Financial Group offers entrepreneurs from all backgrounds the opportunity to start their own business on a level playing field. Dr. Yana Woodhouse, receiving the WCM Wall Street Pioneer Award by the United Black Wall Street of America, Inc., is one of those entrepreneurs. I see WFG and TFA as a place where African Americans with an entrepreneurial mindset can flourish. And the bonus, we help families and serve the communities across the country. To learn more about us, go to worldfinancialgroup.com. We are the sons and daughters of the soul. We are resilient and forever forward thinking. We ask for nothing else than the opportunity to live and to create the lives that we were meant to live. We want nothing but an equal chance at options and possibilities. The same possibilities and options to live out our potential as our fellow man. We want to be heard, understood, and expressive in our reality. We are the future. We are the creative. We are here. Rogers, and you're listening to Urbanology with my dad, Tony Rogers, on WHCR 90.3 FM New York. Good afternoon. It's Tony Rogers, your host for Urbanology, the Art of War. I hope all is well. Wow, we're um, in the holiday season, and uh, I'm sure that a lot of people are visiting friends and family and and all of that. Uh, one of the things that um, I have uh, had a really interesting experience over the years with, with the celebration of Kwanzaa. Uh, a good friend of mine, Jose Farrar, started doing Kwanzaa at City College many, many moons ago. And then um, I developed a Kwanzaa program with uh, a great brother at Leatherworks, Marvin Kelly at M. Sin, again at City College. We were in the ballroom kind of in that building for a long period of time. And then Kwanzaa moved, or different celebrations moved around. And um, it has always been a very interesting uh, a time of, of year to allow for people to have a better understanding of uh, their roots. Uh, my guest today is a young lady I've known for, wow, many years. Matter of fact, I believe um, Pam Lee introduced me to Ina, if I'm not mistaken, many, many, many moons ago. But uh, we're going to be talking today about the Kwanzaa Film Festival, which has been going on for a few years now. And uh, I thought that it would be good for people to kind of have some updates on the festival and uh, get an idea of what's going to take place this year. So please welcome uh, Ms. Ina Norris. How are you doing, Ina? I'm not sure whether you can hear me for some reason. Can you hear me, Ina? Don't look like you're, you're hearing me. Um, 
I'm not sure why we were just talking. Um, so uh, let me kind of proceed and, and, and try to get a text to, 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 to Ida to uh, make sure that she can, can, can hear. But uh, we have uh, tried to, through Soul City, bring uh, a lot of different types of, of programming to you. And, uh, and I want to um, uh, develop some, some, some understanding as to uh, uh, what this whole idea of, of creating a, a new narrative or our narrative. And again, uh, the Kwanzaa Film Festival, which is going to start relatively soon, and I have to uh, get the dates for you. Uh, and I hope we can get Ina uh, connected because uh, she can do a lot better job than I can, I'm sure. But uh, I, I will find it as I, I'm talking. One of the things about live, if you ever seen Saturday Night Live, you'll know that you have to be prepared to, to pivot. <laughs> and, and, things, and things will happen. Um, and we are, um, which I, we're in uh, retrograde, Mercury retrograde. And so uh, I should have uh, remembered that because you have to always do things twice and prepare yourself for uh, many mishaps. Uh, Mercury, Mercury retrograde is like having uh, Murphy's Law on steroids because things tend not to go as you would want them to go. So um, bear with me. I am looking. Ina, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Can you hear I me? Was, you know, I was dancing and doing the Sandman thing. <laughs> you know, try to try to keep things going. Thank you. Yes, uh, I can. I'm, I'm sure. And and Matt and I don't know what that is. That me? Are you with? Are you still with me? I am still with you. Can you hear me? Just, I don't know why I brought up Murphy's Law. <laughs> I can hear you. Please, I give us information about the Kwanzaa Film Festival while we're still connected. I don't want to lose you. Okay. Well, the Kwanzaa Film Festival starts December 26. That's a Tuesday. That's the day, first day of Kwanzaa, which is Unity. And we have the Unity Award Ceremony and Opening Film. And on that day, we'll be honoring Dr. Cheryl Simmons, John, which is a water advocate. She runs the Youth and Global Health. We're going to be honoring John Blassingame. He's a pioneer in the publishing company and publishing business. Crystal Willey, she is a pioneer as a producer, but she also does a rites of passage program for girls called the Oyo Sisters. Chuck Chill Out our celebrity DJ, Vonde Curtis Hall, who is a director and an actor for a whole bunch of his record stands, <laughs> long and wide, Chester Gregory, a Broadway star. And the two films we're going to be showing that day, one is In Karuka and by ne Nebulia Lester, Nebulia Lester, who was born in Harlem, and the other um, filmmaker, Josiah Johnson, the wealthiest man in the world. So, you know, it's going to be entertainment by Samuelis, who was part of, you know, one of the greatest competitions on television. Um, not necessarily American Idol, but the other one. Is it The Voice? One of those. The Voice? Maybe it's The Voice. <laughs> and um, he's been a part of that competition, but I know he also was at the Apollo Theater, and he's known for having similarity of voice with Chaka Khan. So we're going to have a really lively event to open our film festival at the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture. The doors open at 5. The event starts at 6. Um, 
That's just for the mix and mingling. And the showtime is at seven. So how do you come? Just, you know, you, you, we are welcoming everyone. Our very first event we welcome is we have a, a, a list. You can sign up for it. You can either call the Schomburg or you can um, email us kwanzafilmfestival at gmail.com. We invite everyone to come. Um, every year we've had food for that day. Unity Day is just so important to just start the vibes. It's not about who could pay to come, who can't. We do ask for donations, but it's about us all being together in unity for that very first day before the festival starts. Well, uh, one, uh, Ina, please put me down as an RSVP. Surely. Uh, you have uh, some very interesting and talented people that you're honoring. Uh, matter of fact, Vandi has been on the show for a number of times. He's a, a close friend and uh, actually uh, a client of my wife. My wife is a financial advisor, so he and his wife uh, are, are clients. Uh, always glad to support you, and especially with many of the friends. I, and I believe, was it Pam Lee that introduced us, Ina? Yes, my very best friend, um, Pamela Lee, we were doing a play at City College, raising money for a number of the causes that you had. And we did Nobody Loves a Black Little Girl When She Becomes a Woman at Aaron Davis Hall. Oh, that day, we gave uh, you honor Vivian Robinson. I think it was the last honor that she ever had. We named the Vi Vivian Robinson Day. Remember that day? Yeah, yeah. And I have that on videotape. Wow. I that do. Would be one of these days, uh, we had the Manhattan Borough president there. We had the president of City College there, and then we did the play. I have that on videotape. You were there. You started us right there. That was such a memorable moment. Unfortunately, shortly after she passed, but after we did the play, we all went out together. She sat with me. She talked about the meaning of the play, and it was just such a very special moment. Thank you, Tony. <laughs> Thank you. And Pamela, as you know, she's my best friend um, for so long. We started working together in 1984, 85. Wow. And, and from that point on, we, we talked to each other every day of our lives <laughs> since that day until we couldn't talk anymore. The late Pamela Lee. Yes. Yeah, right. I, yeah. I hired. Pamela, when she uh, came to the chamber, I think we were at 310 Lenox Avenue, and she uh, was a summer intern. <laughs> and, and that's how long, you know, and that, because, wow, that was, Harlem Week will be 50 years old next year. So yeah. that must have been at least 30, 34, maybe, yeah, it was it was a while ago. That was before. Oh, so was, so we years. thought about it. <laughs> That's fair. But tell us some of the things you've been doing a lot of different types of things. Well, you know, I, I just been engaged in this Kwanzaa Film Festival, as you know, you know me as a playwright, filmmaker, what have you, but I just really um love the opportunity for seven years we've been doing this film festival and it is an opportunity for community because there's a lot of um, filmmakers, particularly in the tri-state area that don't know each other, don't necessarily work together. Someone has this strength, this other one has this strength. And when they come together, there's a lot, to, lot that can happen. So the whole concept of doing the Kwanzaa Film Festival came out of one year, my, we, my family has celebrated Kwanzaa for a long time. You know, Dr. Milana Karinga started Kwanzaa. Mm -hmm. And my father was like, you know, he wanted more meaning to that time. And he, you know, was a Pan-African and didn't like the fact that during Christmas time, we spent a lot of money outside of our community. <laughs> so he was like, let's, you know, we're going to start practicing Kwanzaa. Matter of fact, I think my youngest son has never known Christmas um, but my oldest son has. But anyway, it is not a religious holiday. It's a cultural holiday. So one year, we, my mother always has a celebration. And one year she said, you know, I don't feel like doing Kwanzaa. And I went into a state of shock because we always go to our house for Kwanzaa. I was like, what are we going to do? And then I had been telling to somebody I wanted to do a film festival. So that's when I said, well, let's 
you know, I want to do a Kwanzaa Film Festival where people could come during Kwanzaa and see films that are related to the seven principles. So that's how we select our films. We look at the principles. Is unity showing up in this film? Cooperative economics showing up in this film? Is purpose showing up? If we can find one of the principles that show up in your film, you're qualified to be in our film festival. So that's how that all began. And of course, that year, my mother still wound up having the event. That was just <laughs> a moment for her. <laughs> and she still has it. But that's what happened, um, how I started the Kwanzaa Film Festival. And then um, Paulette Jones, somewhat, she's from um, Newark, New Jersey. She was working on a film festival. And she came along to support it. And then one person and that person and some of the people I think four of the people that started with us are no longer on this planet, but they are our ancestors looking down at us and helping and supporting us. But we go for seven days, <laughs> seven days. Um, we're gonna be at the Schomburg for four of those days. And then we go to Maisel Cinema on the very last day. Mm -hmm. and the last two days we do it virtually. So every day of Kwanzaa, there is something happening. Wow, you know, and and it's interesting. I I do know where were what was the first day? What, I mean, the first Kwanzaa Fest, Film Festival. What did you have there? It was at the um, community center on one twenty fifth between second and third, run by the Scientology. We rented out that space, and I loved it because one of the things that the first Kwanzaa um, theme was a festival in a day. So you start at nine in the morning and end at 12 midnight. So mm -hmm. we, try, we had um, workshops, vendors, exhibition, and films in various different rooms. So we were trying to cram everything you would really get in a festival for a week, all in a day. <laughs> that that lasted for two years. After that, we was like, no, we're gonna spread it out. We would be exhausted. And some people want to come on different days. And then we just started spreading out something every day. But yeah, it, it started out a festival in a day. And um, we had some heavy hitters come at the very, very beginning. We had Douglas Holloway, who was a Hall of Famer when it comes to um, not the internet, but cable television. Mm -hmm. And he was the first Black um director of a major department with NBC. He came out the very first time I did the film festival and he is still with us today. Wow. Now he has two, two uh, cable networks, streaming sites. And, you know, he, he always supports us. And um, he also does like a film funding workshop so that people can know how they can get money for their film. We have Morocco Omari. He always comes out an actor. He's been on countless amount of um, films, um, P Valley, um, Empire, and, and a whole bunch of other things. And he comes out. Um, we just had, we've been fortunate to have people come out that really understand the whole filmmaking process that can share with people who are beginning. We have beginners, we have middle, um, career professionals, and we've had people who are entrenched in the career. So it's been good. And I always say the best part of a film festival is networking with the people who come. You learn a lot, you learn a lot from talking to each other. Which is which is an important uh, part. And I uh, know that a lot of people have. Um, been able to benefit greatly just by having that relationship over the years. Because, uh, and you've been, you know, I see you all of the time. You know, you 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 are a busy a busy lady. Yeah, because we don't just do it during December twenty sixth to December I mean, January first. We have events. Um, we do monologue slams throughout the year. We did. This year we did a, um, a Billie Holiday review on her birthday. Mm -hmm. we do, Juneteenth was um, was incredible. We had people who were wrongfully incarcerated come out and speak in between a lot of um, entertainment. 
We also, you know, had um, read the constitution in front of the shrine uh, mm -hmm. from the young to the old. And we just did, we just keep doing things. And not only the fact that we do the festival, we also help filmmakers. If they give us a call, we, um, we try to connect them to distributors and also other people that may be able to help them. Just like say, for instance, you need a person to hold the boom. We may know someone or just, okay, I'm looking for funding or um, recently a couple of times people have just needed people to donate food. And we have those resources. J.B. Morgan um, with Oral History, he always helps us get um, donations for other filmmakers, not just for the film festival. So it's just been a labor of love. Um, people really understanding the importance of Kwanzaa. And I'm just trying to uh, create a template or a cookie cutter of using those principles to create a business. Is this business, are we using unity? Are we doing collective work and responsibility? Are we defining our own selves or are we just falling into line with what everybody else does? Are we, what's our purpose? How we are um, using cooperative economics, you know, and start to ask that question. If we use these principles, will we build, will the build, will the business be stronger? It is a challenge because people are just used to not doing it that way. <laughs> so mm -hmm. when you talk about doing that way, cooperative economics, you bring this and I bring that, or, you know, or um, collective work and responsibility, everybody bringing something to the table they're not necessarily used to doing that, sharing the greatness of a business where everyone can have a sense of equality. That's not what they're used to. When you go to work, if you're the lowest man on the tonal pole, nobody really always doesn't want to hear what you got to say. But in a collective work and responsibility, we all are coming together and no, part, no one's bigger or lesser than anyone else. So actually outside of the festival, trying to use those principles and growing the Kwanzaa Film Festival Corporation is the challenge more so than the festival itself, getting people to think like that. Well, you know, uh, Kwanzaa has been a very interesting um, cultural uh, uh, event. I, I remember you know, being in the Panther Party, there had been a tremendous beef in California between Ron Karenga, you know, and, and some of the uh, people in the party. So for a long period of time, unfortunately, a lot of people kind of did not buy into the understanding of it. Kwame Ture, or Stokely Carmichael, started talking about Pan-Africanism. Mm -hmm. and, and when we start talking about Pan-Africanism, we, we began to look at something different. Uh, and to this day, uh, the, the whole idea of awakening the, the, the diaspora is becoming stronger and, and stronger as, as we, we look at that. And as I suppose I've grown older and wiser, uh, I, I see the importance of allowing for people to know that there is a Kwanzaa, there is a holiday for you to come together. And whether you um, celebrate uh, Kwanzaa or Christmas or whatever, uh, there is an energy at this time of the year for family. Yes. And to come together and to do things uh, for family, around family, or even thinking about those who are ancestors. And so it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting time of year. Uh, and uh, whether we go back to Kemet or come straight up to where we are now, for some reason, uh, December <laughs> and the beginning of a new year has always been the time of, of, of celebration. So I'm glad you mentioned that because Kwanzaa Film Festival is the first and the last film festival of the year, period. Okay. <laughs> we are the first and the last because we start December 26th and we begin January, we end January 1st, which is the first day of the year. So mm -hmm. 
that's one, two, we're the only Kwanzaa Film Festival, you know, so that's another thing. But one of the good things about setting the tone, every day we start with libation for the Kwanzaa Film Festival and calling of the names of our ancestors. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started every single day before we show the films. So you bring up the that that fact about and you know not forgetting our ancestors and being able to call their name during this particular during this particular season. And again, I, I know that Dr. Milana Karinga went into Africa and he like we can't really own a principle of faith and we can't really own a principle of self-determination. It's just that he put it all together. So the message is clear. Like we really do need to look at these principles because they come out of Africa. Um, even um, First Harvest, that's what it was called because during this season, we're not really in harvest, but in Africa, they are during mm -hmm. December. So First Harvest is just really gathering together and we're all celebrating what's going to be gathered up. And the principles are undebatable. I'm sure we know we need faith. I'm sure we know we need purpose. And so we really go around the principles of Kwanzaa to get those um, that sense of unity amongst us. And particularly as filmmakers, a lot of people do live on the edge of being a filmmaker or in, in any kind of artist, and they need to be pulled back in to continue because it's not an easy thing to do. Um, sometimes being an artist is very thankless. And sometimes you have to have four or five jobs to, to stay up. <laughs> to, 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 to pay the rent, right? <laughs> but yeah, so just to be able to come together, what I like the most is that I got to talk to people from other cultures because during um, COVID, we had um, one of our um, events was in Botswana, but I was here in New York because it was on, online. So we had an event in Botswana. We get, you know, Cameroon, we get things from Ghana, we get things from Italy, uh, films from Italy, and we get these people to either come, we've had people come from South Africa, or we do the virtual events from people all over the world, UK. This year, we're going to have uh, a film from UK, and that's going to be shown virtually on um, Monday. So, because Monday, we're going to be showing our faith-based films and having a faith-based discussion because the faith-based film industry is growing tremendously. And so mm -hmm. the, the opportunities there are, are wide. So we have some um, professionals, industry professionals coming on to talk about that. We're also having a pitch competition for base face film on January 1st. So, you know, Every day there's a theme like on Kuchakalia, we're celebrating Black women filmmakers who are producers and directors. We have a host of films and then we'll hear their challenges and how they sustain themselves from being filmmakers, hearing other people's stories, mm -hmm. give you ideas of how, what you can do, you know? And it's interesting that you say that uh, Vondi's wife is uh, a, a tremendous, uh, Cassie, uh, filmmaker and director of yes. many, many major films. Very, very, she's, she she actually did one of my favorite films was E by Yo. I love oh. it. <laughs> That's what, a classic, a classic. And and, um, and she did, yeah, I think her last film was uh, the one about um, uh, Whitney, Whitney Houston. Whitney Houston, absolutely. Yeah. And then, it's sorry. important to have avenues, and, and I didn't mean to, because you were going to have a thought. What were you going to say? No, I was, no, I'm patient. No, I was yeah. just going to tell you, just like we said, the women, that next day we're doing Black male writers. And, mm. and the reason why is because there's a Me Too movement, but the Me Too movement should not say so we would call this us too. Men still have things to say that are particularly uh, for what's going on with black men. And and because one person is told to speak up doesn't mean you should be silenced. So black male writers were focusing on them. Um, mm -hmm. That Thursday, um, they have a, a great group of film, but after we show their films, we're gonna do the talk back at the shrine 
um, you know, black male storytelling, but I wanted to mention on Thursday because it's important, we're doing Lead Belly and Lead Belly's mm. family is coming up and the Lead Belly family is going to be um, donating um, some uh, relics from their archive to the, um, to the Schomburg and a lot of um, dignitaries in the music business, because Let Belly really is the father of rock and roll, that <laughs> um, about 50 entertainers still loop their music down to ludicrous and even hip hop um, artists still loop his music. And a lot of the dignitaries and um, their publishing companies are coming out to support that film. It is a premiere. And it's a documentary. It starts at four o'clock at the Schomburg. So, you know, I just want to. Is that on the 26th? That, no, that's going to be on the 28th. The 28th. Interesting. Now, for the viewers, if they want to get the calendar of events and the schedules and the, and, and, and the like, they can go to your website. Yes, and the website, just make sure you write the Kwanzaa Film Festival dot com. Mm -hmm. And you could either the Kwanzaa Film Festival keep hitting all of the different um, you know, how you have about schedule, but even more so hit all of them because the schedules kind of spread itself out. Right. And, and then also you can look at um film freeway, but mainly just if you go on the um website, you you get everything you need. You'll know and, when you go. And are you on uh, the Instagram stuff? Yeah, so go on the Kwanzaa Film Fest mm -hmm. on Instagram. And I like to say Ina Norris because Ina Norris posts everything for everything. So you can also <laughs> find Ina Norris on Facebook. You can find the Kwanzaa Film Festival on Facebook. I'm still really strong advocate of Facebook. Um, and a woman as well, and a woman productions, but mainly we've been just focusing on putting everything under the Kwanzaa Film Festival. Now, um, can you also make donations from your website? Yes. Um, if you are not for profit. Yeah, we are not for profit. You can go to PayPal, Kwanzaa Film Festival at gmail.com. We'll put money in our PayPal account. That's that's great, which is good to know during uh, the holidays and for the listeners. I mean, you know, if you know, twenty people put twenty dollars, <laughs> it helps because honestly, goes a long way. It goes a long way. There's just so much. A seven day film festival is just so much that goes out, you know. And like I said, we've been doing it as a labor of love, you know, and. Um, yeah, it does help. And there's a lot of things that we would like to do next year. We're hoping to raise money to get people to do eight. We have a whole bunch of Christmas stories, a Christmas film. Mm -hmm. We need some more about Kwanzaa, right? So we're, we're working on that. But I also wanted to just mention, just because I mentioned everything else on Friday. <laughs> That's why you're here. <laughs> we want to, we yeah, I don't want to see what else I said. You talked about the men and the women, but on Friday we have a sports and entertainment day. We have a film, Interception, by Sophia Sungai. She did a documentary on Jane Kennedy, the first black woman sportscaster. Mm -hmm. We have a film, The Music Got Me, that's on house music by Christian Johnson. We have a film, Dapper Dan, Don't Hate the Player, Change the Game. <laughs> <laughs> we have a film called Home Come Ready by F. William Samuel, and that's about homecoming at Hampton University. I go, I, that's my, uh, I'm alumni <laughs> of Hampton. We have Dare Josephine about Josephine Baker by Amber Monet. And then we have, um, I don't know if you heard of the Kingdom Basketball League. We have a documentary on that. Hmm. And also for the Nessa. The Kingdom Basketball League. Uh, yeah. And like Sean, yeah, Sean Antoine did a wonderful documentary. When I say 10 stars, and you see even some of the people like, you know, that were young and now they're famous. You see them in the documentary. It's just a great documentary. This this basketball league 
happened in Harlem. So you see a lot of people who grew up in Harlem and what they've become now. It's very amazing. And then we have Vanessa Monk, Veronica White, A Life in the Key of Community. And that is Thelonious Monk niece. She was a jazz singer. And that's a documentary. And I do want to mention, we're going to have a conversation with Clayton Banks from Silicon Harlem and Reggie Middleton on cooperative economics. I don't know if everyone knows, but Reggie Middleton just won a very major uh, lawsuit because a lot of this cryptocurrency and whatever actually was, they stole his business plan and all of his identity and no one expected him to win. And he just won weeks ago. It's an amazing story. And we also have a um, workshop on sustaining your content, su- content successfully and financially with some top Black entertainment lawyers. So we'll be talking about that on Friday. Don't miss it. Don't miss it. And then the 30th, we're at the Maisel Theater and we're doing a film. And I really hope people come, particularly people who are into martial arts. <laughs> Our very first film starts at 11 at Maisel's and it's called I Am a Martial Artist. This man used martial artists to do rehabilitation for people with autism. Wow. And the yeah. results were astronomical they were wonderful and it's a wonderful documentary and then after that we have the 18th directed by khalil massey lifetime directed by james carter that's a comedy and i know james carter has been around doing a lot of black theater he works for good morning america and he's going to be a part of our film festival we have seeking truth she's also harlem 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 might, should I say, <laughs> from Bonnie Oliver. Um, we have Afro Unidad, Roots and Rebellion. And then we have The Holistic Journey, which is Dr. Savi's son, um, is in this docu- documentary directed by Bobby Broom. And then downstairs, we're going to have a bunch of workshops, how to get into, how to do a music video under $500, <laughs> how, how to get into the um, makeup, business in film and we that's just a, that's a that's a that's a, a very lucrative business to be in exactly they make more money than some of the stars that they make up yes and and just go online and tune into our virtual program we have some really good films virtually and um for that sunday and that monday it start at um for sunday it's gonna start at three from three to six, but on Monday, it's gonna start early on. Like there's activities all day long at 11. So yeah, if you go on the website, you'll get more information. If you need to call, there's a phone number on the website. You can ask questions, but um, yeah, we're there just hoping to- um, Boy, oh boy, I mean, I, I mean, he- I, I I'm tired just listening. <laughs> I'm exhausted. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm exhausted. And that's the other thing. If anybody wants to volunteer for next year, particularly young people who you know might be in college, might want to learn about the entertainment business, we are definitely looking for people to come and work with us next year. Um, and um, you will learn a lot. Mm-hmm. One of my interns. She was my intern for like three years. And after working with us, she went and got a contract from Princess George to do their film festival for the county. So you can take that information that you learn and and use it. it. it, Yeah. Play it forward, huh? Yeah, exactly. I was in a meeting at the Harlem Renaissance and I looked over and I saw you in a meeting. Uh, have, are you thinking about doing something at some point at the Harlem Renaissance? Yeah, I was trying to do it. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention our after events. <laughs> so, okay, we have on Wednesday, we're at the Schaumburg from 12 to 545. And then right after that, we go over to the shrine and we're doing a 50 years a celebration of the 50 year anniversary of hip hop. Community rap along. So we all gonna be able to sing all of those songs together. 
<laughs> and in between those songs, we're going to have show some music videos that were entered into the film festival. And we're going to also have some performances. But it's going to be a community wrap along. That's going to be a bunch of fun. That should be very interesting. <laughs> yes. And then that Thursday, we go back to the shrine. And we're going to be doing um, the Lead Belly um, reception after the Lead Belly. There's just that community that's coming out. They're flying from all over to be at the Lead Belly uh, reception. It's just worth going there. And then we're going to have a workshop there as well. And even and that's with, on the 28th, right? That's, that's the 28th. Yeah. And I should mention on the 27th, we are going to have um, Conrad Tillard. And Brother D talk about where did the conscious rap go? Where did it go? So that's going to be a discussion there. Which so, a, Which is an interesting question. Where did it go? Yes. Yeah, yeah, so. We know where it went, but that's a whole other, that's a whole other show. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited. It's so much. It's so many moving parts with the film festival. So there's something for everyone. And even like bring your young, you know, especially Saturday, bring the young people, bring your children, because a lot of them get really excited. I've had a 10 year old filmmaker. I've had a 16 year old filmmaker into their films, you know, so it's been a really I've and then you you see them grow up and you're like, wow, seven years ago you had a film and now you're doing this. You're like <laughs> amazed the growth that happens. And, and I've had film film um, makers who were in our first film festival, and then you see they come back for the second one, the third, fourth, and you see them evolve. Mm -hmm. By the time this year, their films are much better, you know, quality, they just evolve and you get to see that. Have you, have you ever uh, had an uh, uh, interface with uh, Jamal Joseph? I have talked to him before. I, I've been in a meeting with him before. Uh -huh. And I also want to give a shout out to Volza Rivers because he has supported our film festival this <laughs> yeah. year um, with a donation from the New Federal Theater. So thank you. I also want to give a shout out to Afro Crowd. Afro Crowd will be at our film festival for while we're at the Schomburg doing um, what you call a edit thon. So Afro Crowd. Um, they are like a watchdog, uh, a group that makes sure that Black people are getting their fair share of being on the internet, being mm -hmm. on the Wikipedia page, and they go all around the world making sure that we are treated equally in the internet real estate. And so we're gonna have, they're going to be doing an edit on at the Schaumburg while we're showing films. So if you want to get your Wikipedia page together, they can show you how to get that started. Or if you know somebody in your family that should have had a Wikipedia page, but they don't, mm -hmm. you might want to come. They have been helping. I mean, I know almost anyone that we have brought to the festival, they've helped get them their Wikipedia page. They actually mm -hmm. did mine as well. So mm -hmm. Linda Dabo, I really thank her for that because she, and Sherry um, Antoine, she really, you know, puts that effort effort out. So, um, and also I want to say MCU, they made us a nice little contribution. Uh, wasn't much, but it, they, next year when they know what's better, it'd be bigger. <laughs> That's what they said. <laughs> I want to say thank you for what, what was, was, what was done. Um, Stephen Dixby, uh, he has been a contributor and I appreciate it because we really couldn't exist if people, all small donations, lead up to what we can do. Like we put it all together and make things happen. So mm -hmm. I appreciate everything that someone gives, whether it's $25, whether it's $500, whether it's a thousand, we appreciate it, you know? And um, it's really important because nothing runs on air. Nothing. Well, that's true. And plus your volunteers, you've had some very loyal volunteers who yes. above and beyond the call of duty have been able to uh, yes, do a lot of work. Absolutely, Kira Worthy, Paulette, um, Dietrich, Kelsey, um, Stephen Digsby, um, my my sister Akila. She always does um, 
soul works, which I told you, she really needs to meet you. She does soul works, but she has a yoga studio mm -hmm. and they always do a workshop on how to do self care for artists. There's certain things that you need to do to make sure you don't become overwhelmed. Matter of fact, we've had a lot of crises in the, with artists, with drugs, alcohol, suicide, um, panic attacks and all that. And she and comes aboard and um, this year she'll be um, interviewing Dr. Carmen Smith, mm -hmm. who she doesn't necessarily treat trauma. What she does is teach you how to bring up joy. And so mm -hmm. she has a whole documentary on how to create joy in your life. And she's going to be interviewed by Soul Works, which is Akila Norris. And then we have a man from Australia who does these music videos to help you calm down. So you see nature while he does the music and it's just beautiful. He's going to be interviewed and that's going to be also on Monday. So we have a lot planned. Some of the stuff we couldn't get to this time, but we'll just spread it out throughout the year because there are some goals that we have that we want to meet. So on the last day of the festival, where will that be Again. That will be at Basil Cinema, the mm -hmm. in person, and then we go into two days virtual. Okay, and uh, Lead Belly on the twenty eighth. I want to keep that in mind. And yes. you, you, you're doing something with Silicon Hall and Clayton Banks. Yeah, he's There's gonna a be conversation. Or something. Yeah, Friday, Friday. Yes, and that's mm -hmm. the same day we're also doing the, um, the entertainment lawyers, and and it's gonna be like with the entertainment lawyers, you can ask questions. You'll be able to ask your questions. It's going to be not a whole lot of talking. What You're going to be in the audience and you'll be able to ask questions, put it on the note card mm -hmm. so that you can get your answers. Um, you know, you can get some answers because one of the things about um, creatives, they just, they're just creative and they mm -hmm. may start something off without really understanding what they need to do legally. And where is that going to be? That's going to be at the Schomburg as well. Okay. I, what, the, one of the uh, members of uh, the Harlem Tourism Board, uh, Michael Ross, has been uh, involved. He worked with Vosa for a long period of time, but he's an entertainment lawyer, does a lot of work. I have to let him know about that. He probably. Definitely, definitely. definitely. But, but, but the networking is important, and that's what you do. And, uh, and for those who uh, are, are, are on this uh, broadcast and you're in the area, um, it's good to be able to, uh, especially the one at the Schomburg, the opening, if you could, you know, and you have to hurry because the Schomburg, you know, is so big. <laughs> so, you know, the RSVP. Yeah, we have an extensive RSVP already, but we have there. Schomburg is really not that. It's 340 seats, but we have a lot of people coming for the. So I suggest everyone RSVP. Don't right. don't disappoint yourself. Just get RSVP. Um, sure. A lot of people are flying in from all over to be at the Schomburg that day. There is Eric Adams is supposed to come at 7:30, but also. <laughs> Through the grapevine, I can't guarantee you, but the governor of Maryland is supposed to be coming as well. Right. And that so is, that's, that's amazing, right? So there's a lot of people that are coming. Um, um, Greg Cooper from, uh, is it Gregory Cooper? That the son of um, the person who started the Apollo Theater or had something to do with the Apollo Theater. Mm -hmm. um, there's just a lot of very- Ralph Cooper. Ralph, Ralph Cooper. Cooper. Thank you, Ralph Cooper's Ralph Cooper. writing, and um, there's like Ted magazines coming. Greg Cooper. That what is yeah. what is he supposed I, to be? I, I haven't seen Greg, Greg in so Ralph, long. And then Ralph Cooper. I'm sorry, Julia. Ralph, yeah, Ralph Cooper was. Uh, yeah. He was a famous cowboy, <laughs> and he played in a lot of movies. Sometimes you can see a Ralph Cooper movie in the, uh, like the 20s or 30s. He was something, but. Uh, uh, he did a lot with Showtime. To and, a lot and, of and, I, and let me not forget Soul City. Matt oh. McCoy has definitely been guiding me, and I appreciate him taking my phone calls and giving me suggestions and also 
doing this broadcast and I thank him. And last year he came out and um, we did a segment on cooperative economics with Dane Dash mm -hmm. and his, um, I believe his sister right Yana, now. Yana Woodhouse. Yes. And that was a wonderful moment. Um, you know, we would love to do something like that again. You know, I'm, I'm talking to Dane's people, probably going to try to hook up for Black History Month. But the cooperative economics is a really important piece in sustain, sustaining the things that we do. Collective economics. Yeah. Now, how? I guess uh, the pandemic, like everyone else, you had to pivot onto the virtual yes. uh, platform. I talked to a lot of people, whether it's the chamber or whatever, and one of the things that I'm getting back is that the experience, uh, you had to pivot because it was different, but it created a whole different type of market opportunity because you were able to attract people from around the world into what you were planning to do. Did you get that experience? Yeah. Too? Yes. That was one of the times, like I said, we had did an event with Botswana. Mm -hmm. We had did something uh, with a group in Botswana. We did a group in England. Of course, the LA family was coming through a lot more. You know, people were able to come from wherever they were. So that was a really nice opportunity. Um, we had such wonderful events too. We we had an event where almost the whole panel was from a different place. You know, that's something you don't normally get when you're here. People are like, okay, it's of course so much to travel. I don't know if I can make it. But there we could have um, different people from different parts of the country be on a panel. So it's, it was great. I actually enjoyed it. Would I want that to be the only thing? I think it's both. Like I want both and that's what we're doing in person mm -hmm. and virtual. Well, uh, again, uh, Ina, you have always been in my eyes, a person who uh, knew how to get things done. Um, you were close as you indicated to my close friend and I kind of adopted daughter Pam Lee right. who uh, you know was 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 my heart she was there for a long period of time and uh, <laughs> sometimes she used to get on my case because you know how did you get me into this stuff <laughs> but, but you know what's so interesting because Pam and I a lot of people just think of the, you know, we did the inner woman and the theater thing together. But before we did inner woman, me and Pam had a lingerie business. And people think, oh, she just did the inner woman stuff with you, the theater. But me and her, we were always scheming. We wanted to, we tried to open up a, um, a white castle and find out that was a family business. You just cannot open up a white castle. Me and her was always thinking of different things to do. And, um, you know, she was a, definitely the uh, wind behind my wings. There was a period where she stopped doing it in a woman because of there's the chamber and her job. But her plan, we had already had the plan when she retired that she was going to, again, there was a certain portion of in a woman that I just kept on trying to hold on to. And it was hard. It was the New York City Young Producers Project. Mm -hmm. So she was going to be the head of that. But um, no, I, 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 I'm still, like I said, she, she, even when she was getting sick, she would say to me, Anna, please don't stop. Don't stop. She was afraid that I would stop because I would, because that's how much, you know, she's my best friend. You, you don't want to be running or whatever, but she would say, don't stop, don't stop. And then when, you know, things happen, I have to always remember that don't stop, you know, just keep going. She was just an unusual person. There was one of a kind, just a beautiful spirit. And she will, and I always remember her and I almost always talk about her whenever I'm out publicly because I don't know if I would even be who I am because when I started Nobody Loves a Black Little Girl When She Comes a Woman, I went to her house with a <laughs> box of poems in a box because she, she invited like three other women to come and she's like, bring that box of poems to my house. So I brought the box of poems and we read it. And she said, and they all said, you should make that a play. 
If she had not let me bring that box of poems, I don't know <laughs> if I would have even been an artist. I might have still continued on with social work. You know what I mean? But <laughs> at that point, she's like, we, and she was such a business minded person, which was a balance because I was so, you know, more on the creative side. But she was funny too. She was creative too. I got her for the also of when me and her played Pick Me Market. market. <laughs> I have a whole bunch of footage of him too. I would like to see some of those. As I said before, uh, when Pam was a summer youth intern, she became my intern, and, and and that became we became close. And she just took over. And did pretty soon I was going to her finding out, you know. Then she started working with the city, and you know, and then a kisser was born, and all all those things I was able to experience with with Pam Lee, who. Uh, I will always, they say, as long as your friends and family remember you, you will always be alive. Yes, yes, and, uh, yes. Uh, when I see you, I see Pam, you know. I mean, that's yes. that's just the kind of relationship yes. she had with people. You know, yes, she was close, if you were close to her, you were close to me because I knew you had to have a certain type of quality because right. if not, yeah. you wouldn't be there. Right, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. But anyway, uh, I'm just happy that we were able to connect and, yes, uh, thank you so and much. I was able to uh, uh, talk to you about some things that affect, you know, sometimes, you know, as we grow, uh, we have so many memories that are locked into parts of our mind that it takes a conversation like this to bring out some of the things that have been locked away that brings you joy and and mm -hmm. when you think about it, it creates this situation that brings you closer. You know, and Pam, Pam was a Capricorn, so maybe yes. she's somewhere, you know, saying, okay, you know, thank you. <laughs> and uh, and uh, Ina, I wish you all of the luck. Uh, again, you. please RSVP me for the, the, um, the 26th and... Um, and, and that belly event. I'll put you down for the 28th as well. Because right. um, I don't, you know, lead belly, like I said, you may definitely want to be in that conversation because it's going to be a I really. Mean, you know, and that's a whole show in itself as far as what he did and how and what people were able to get from him. But thank you for doing what you're doing, branding all of this type of information and using uh, Kwanzaa for uh, uh, a, a way to uh, allow for us to understand more about who we are. Yeah. And again, uh, thanks to uh, Soul City for providing this type of platform so more people can see people like yourself and, 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 and understand how to support it. So again, please go to thekwanzafilmfestival.com um, they need donations because uh, they're doing a lot of work. You heard all of the stuff she's doing. So, so you know, even if it's just, you know, whatever it is will be helpful. And, you know, this is the season for giving. And this is truly uh, a, a worthy cause to, to, to do. So come out and uh, we'll be seeing you. And thank you so much, Anna. Thank you. <laughs> Enjoy your evening. That's quite a, and, and, and I would like again to wish everyone uh, we uh, getting close to, you know, this holiday season. But one of the things that uh, we also know is that this is the time where a lot of times people are depressed. So I want people to begin to um, understand uh, that uh, life is what you make it and, um, and, as long as you can uh, be here on this earth, there's always an option. And uh, no matter whether you are with a crowd of people or whether you're by yourself, uh, happiness comes from within. And um, again, uh, we'll be back, God willing, uh, for another show before the beginning of the year. And uh, thank you for watching. This is Tony Rogers, your host for Urbanology System, wishing you uh, a, a good evening. This is Kia Rogers, and you're listening to Urbanology with my dad, 
Tony Rogers on WHCR 90.3 FM New York.